ever had those extremely tough days when it's super hard to get even a bite, that's when you should use finesse fishing. Hi, my name is David and I'm going to show you how and why you should do finesse fishing to catch those really big monster perch. fish are very careful but in the end if you, uh, if you wait a few seconds then uh, you can hook it there we are it's a nice fish all right there we are guys really nice perch this is what we are after Really great, it's such fun to fish with Carolina rig and especially with the best gear. I love it. Let's set it back. Yes. Today I'm fishing with the Poison Adrena paired with the new Shimano Vanquish, which is the flagship model of the Magnum Light series. This light and really sensitive setup enables me to present my lures in the best possible way. If you are new or inexperienced in finesse fishing, I'll quickly explain what it means. Finesse means that you are applying a more refined and a more sophisticated approach in your presentation. So that means lighter lines, thinner hooks, smaller lures and lighter weights. So these perch are holding up near structure. You need to find those muscle banks those rocky bottoms. That's where those perch are holding up. And that's why we're using Carolina rig and net rig, which are two of my favorite techniques for finesse fishing. So you might wonder, why do we do this style of fishing? Well, here's the thing. There are three types of perch. There's those really active or aggressive ones that will take anything that comes in their sight. That's what you catch with your, your power fishing, your, your crankbaits, chatterbaits, spinnerbaits. And then there's that number two fish that are not really active. So they're more passive and you need to slow down your presentation, use lighter or smaller lures. And then there's those perch that can be very, very careful from time to time. Seem to be off, really passive, don't want anything. This can be affected by many things. High pressured waters, a lot of anglers, so they've seen a lot of those baits. Or weather conditions, so if it's getting really cold or rapid changes to the weather, um, that's when you have more of those passive fish. If you apply some small changes to your presentation, you can catch any of those fish. Alright guys, we got the nice one. Really great perch. Come on. Yes. Awesome. Yes, really awesome. Nice perch on the Carolina rig. So fished very slow. I, uh, I actually made my, my rig a bit longer because uh, the fish were very, very picky. And that helps make it even more finesse. So for my Carolina rig, I attached a long leader 
of 15LB fluorocarbon with an FG knot, which uh, glides really nicely uh, through your guides in order to get that uh, really smooth casting distance. Knotted with a swivel, a little gliding part, which is uh, a bit thicker, better protected against stones, rocks, mussels. On that we have a tungsten bullet. I prefer using 10 or 14 gram for these bigger lakes, but on those smaller waters I would use 5, 7 grams. To make that clacking sound we have a nice bead here, which is not a glass bead but a stone bead. And to protect your knot always use a stopper here. So for the last part of the rig we have a thinner line in order to get a more subtle action and a slower sinking phase of this creature bait. Attached to it we have a worm hook for that thinner profile lures. Knotted with a loop, you can also use it just a normal knot but uh, this loop gives it even more action, more free movement. For your Carolina rig it is important to use the right hooks. There are two types of hooks. There's that standard worm hook for the thinner profile lures, such as this one. And for the bulkier creature baits, we are going to use wide gape hooks. It needs enough space to glide down for you to set that hook. So match the right hooks to your lures in order to create that finesse rig. So there are two types of lures that I really like to use. There's these actual crayfish that mimic crawdads or crayfish. These have big scissors on them and make a lot of movement and noise underwater. But when, it, when you have tough days on high pressured waters or cool days, creature baits are the way to go. These have micro movements and a more subtle action. These glide through the water instead of making a lot of noise. That's what I'm going to use now. When fishing the Carolina rig, there are a couple things that you need to keep in mind. Perch tend to be very far out often, so casting distance is really important. So this Vanquish really helps me to get that casting distance. We have that long strokes pull and there's the infinity loop, which is a really tight and narrow wrapping of the line, which gives you that extra five or 10 meters casting distance. So on this big river lake, you might wonder where should we cast? Well, the thing is, we want to find those structures where those fish are hiding. That means the right depth and feel that structure. So I'm gonna just cast out right there, lay down my line on the water, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven seconds. Now we know that depth. And that way, I just cast out in every direction and find those deeper spots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this one is 10 seconds. It's deeper there, and maybe those perch are holding up a little bit deeper than there. Then what I do is hold my rod right up and try to feel the bottom structure. We're not gonna jig it, we're just making micro movements with a stop and go action. With this sensitive rod and reel, we can really feel whatever the bottom is composed of. Sand, stones, rock piles, or muscle banks. There are a couple of ways to fish your Carolina rig. One of them is by simply dragging your lure. You drag it in and reel that line in. You drag it and reel that line in. That's one of the methods. The second one is what I call the stairs. You lift it, one, two, three, and reel it in. Let it sit, one, two, and let it sit. The most effective way for me is 
to use the reel only. You can do it also with your rod, make, make little more movements, but just simply make small micro movements and that's it. So no dragging and in that way you have the best and most direct contact with your lure. As you can see I'm making really small movements. I'm not making full or not even half handle turns. What is really important is that you take a lot of pauses, let that fish come after your lure. You have to imagine it's really cold down there and those perch are very slow. Sometimes they're waiting five or 10 seconds, depending on how active the perch are. When they're more active, I can fish more with a more pace. When they're slow, I'm making more and longer pauses. So another great aspect of this reel is that low startup inertia. That stop and go, that's really, really effective on perch. So I caught a couple of perch on the Carolina rig and I know the perch are there. So to go even more subtle, I'm going to use a net rig, which is a really slow presentation. And this material is floating material, which stands up really nicely. So drag it in, it comes up with this little tail and mimics a crayfish or a bait fish. With the net rig, we make tiny movements. Just drag it simply over the bottom with small movements. I drag it and reel it in. Let it sit, drag it in a bit and let it sit. That's all. It's really simple, but it's sometimes also hard to really slow down your presentation, for, especially when you're used to, to fish a bit faster. Net rigging needs a bit of practice, but uh, can be very effective. Let's see if we can catch more perch. Ah, fish on. No. This drag is just so awesome. You hear that sound? Alright, there we go. Nice perch on the net rig. So that's it for today. Caught some nice perch on the Carolina and the net rig and that Vanquish gave me that extra control to present my lures in the right way, which is really important when finesse fishing. I hope you learned something today and I wish you good luck on your next session.